yeah. from a theoretical point of view, your body doesn't want to lose weight if it's inflamed and sick. Yeah, absolutely. And and a lot of people are coming from different, you know, different places, you know, and you, and you can have a lot of hormonal imbalances, you know, especially with leptin, and that that is very difficult. If your leptin is raised, raised especially dramatically raised, which which some people are who have been doing a lot of shock diets and uh, eating a lot of carbs and sugar and things like that for years and years and years. Their leptin is going to go up. They're going to get leptin insensitivity, leptin resistance, and along with insulin resistance and and hyperglycemia, this this causes disruption in your body and your metabolism. It's it's a it's a major major signaling molecule for your hormones, for your metabolism, for many many other things. And so while that's massively elevated, it's going to be very difficult to lose weight if your if your leptin is over like a certain amount. It's usually between like four and six. That's that's where you want it ideally. Um, if it goes over 100, which is quite common, I see, I see it quite regularly, people will, will tell you like doctors and who deal with weight loss medicine or bariatric surgeons, they will tell you that if your leptin is over 100, you cannot lose weight on your own. You will not be able to do it. You have to get surgery. You have to get bariatric surgery, a bypass or a sleep or something like that. That's not true. I, I, I see people routinely go on a carnivore diet and not only lose weight, but drop their leptin. And it, the weight loss can be slow at first, but again, that's weight loss, not, not necessarily fat loss and, and body composition. Their health improves dramatically and their leptin starts to come down. And once their leptin gets down to a more normal level, that's when you start seeing the dramatic drop in uh, adipose tissue and, and fat loss. Okay, that's why we love you because you make it so easy. Your family doctor, general practitioner, uh, can test that and they may not know what to do with it. Um, but the optimal levels are, are sort of, you know, when, when you look at reference ranges at, at the lab, those are just basically like the first 2000 people that come in that year, that's the reference range, you know? And so that's, that's a, an average of the population in your area. And this is why two labs in, in the same town can have different reference ranges, slightly different. That's because they have, they had slightly different people come in. And so that's not really a reference range of, of optimal health. That's the reference range of the average in your community. And, you know, the average person used to be healthy. Now the average person is sick and metabolically unhealthy. So 90% of Americans have at least one metabolic illness. 70% of Americans are overweight or obese. The rest of the world is not far behind. In fact, some places are far worse than that. And so it's... It's not, it's not good to go by those reference ranges necessarily. Some of those reference ranges are way out of whack, like leptin. Generally, they, they consider leptin reference range is, is much higher than it should be. 